Oh, I'm so stressed out, I don't know if I can really talk. Well, come on, you're supposed to talk, you're supposed to share, you're a spiritual director. Tell us what you're going to tell us. Yeah, but I'm so stressed out. We hear things like that. Oh, I'm so filled with stress, I've got to take a drink. Oh, I've got stress, I've got to take some aspirin, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. And when we are stressed out, ordinarily we try to get rid of it through artificial means. And that's the sad part. We become addicted to the means. And then when we're addicted, we become even more stressed out. And it's a vicious circle. What is stress? In putting it right down to the least common denominator, when it's with one syllable, it's uh. Uh. What do you mean uh? Well, you notice what happens when I say uh. When I say uh, everything inside of me freezes. Uh. It's just the opposite of uh-huh, uh-huh, but uh. Physiologically, I change when, oh no, it's raining. Oh no, how come he got the promotion and I didn't? Oh no, I don't know what I did wrong. That fudge should have come out. I don't know what. I don't know what I'm going to do with those kids of mine. And on and on it goes, uh, 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 uh. Well, and when we look in the mirror every morning, and whenever we do say, oh, that face of mine, we can see why we live in stress. And not knowing what to do with it, and how come we got it, we look for the least common denominator of at least the least amount of effort, the path of least resistance. And so we try to compensate ourselves with something physical, some pleasure, sometimes illicit pleasure, just because I have such a stressful life at work, I've got to stop at the bar and before I go home to unstress myself. I've been so stressful at work that I've got to sit down and watch the television. And on and on it goes. Artificial compensations. That's the reason why it's a vicious circle. Can there be a life without stress? Yes. Yes, I don't have any stress. Yeah, but you're a priest. Oh, hey. Yeah, but you're Franciscan, eh? I could have stress, and I did have stress. To a very serious degree, now looking at me, you wouldn't think that I had an angioplasty, would you? But I did. And I got stressed out badly. And I was a priest already 20, 25 years, to the degree that they had to clean out my channels of cholesterol. And i got to tell you one thing. The doctor put me on a strict diet. And for a year, religiously, I kept it. But then I began to ponder, hey, why did I have that? It's because you had stress. Why did you have stress? Well, the people caused you to come to the Holy Land, and they caused you to be stressful. And that you start getting pain. <sighs> then my life changed. If that's the case, if stress is connected with ill health, and it is, the doctors will tell us. Your arthritis would not be so bad if you didn't have stress. I can't find anything physical or physically wrong with you, must that you have stress. We know that. Scientists, the medical people have told us that. Can there be life without stress? Yes. There is a special formula. A formula? No, it's not a medicine. It's an attitude. Attitude, yes. Who in the heck do I think that I am, that everything should go right? What makes me think that everything should go my way? That's it. I've got to realize that, hey, I'm not in charge. I'm not God. I can't expect people to bow down and kowtow to me. I can't expect to the temperature of the uh, room, the temperature of the outside, to be just to my liking. I cannot, and if I do, again, that's pride. And so pride and stress work hand in hand to make me wretched and miserable and cause me, not that it should, but it does, to look for temporary pleasurable reliefs. And then we get hooked on. But to work against stress, I must eliminate the negative and accentuate the positive, and don't mess with Mr. In-Between. 
Meaning, therefore, that it's not for me to be an utter. It's raining. Well, okay, God's house, if he wants it to rain, it's okay by me. Well, I want to be a blonde, and here I'm a brunette. Well, God made me a brunette, it's okay by me. Yeah, but blondes have more fun. I know it, but still. If that's what God wants, it's all right by me. Now, you see that answer? If that's what God wants, it's okay by me. Who am I to say to God, hey, God, why don't you do it this way? Why don't you, why did you make this? And why, do, why don't you make this kind of a world? Why didn't you make me this kind of person? I cannot do that. God in his goodness has made, made me for who I am. And I should be grateful. Yeah, but look, one, my left leg is half an inch shorter than my right leg. Well, that's not out of hatred, limitations of nature perhaps. However, even there it's love because now you're humble. You wobble, you're humble. And humility is the ticket to heaven. And boy, I'll tell you, if you just have that one little physical defect, you'll be high in heaven. If you say, well, okay, God, good. If God give, gave me this cross, well, all right. And even it enters into life, family life. <coughs> I thought that this man was the man for me, but look, his cross keeps me humble. And when I'm humble, then I'm able really to get rid of stress. Humility helps a lot. Truth, it's truth. If I live a lie, I will always be under stress. Truth, okay. To accept me for my own limitations. To accept me as a created being. To accept myself as a failure at times. To accept myself as belonging to God. That He made me. Jesus purchased me with His blood. Made it possible for me to find peace and humility and find peace without stress. I have come to give you the fullness of life. This is Jesus talking. And what's the fullness of life? Joy. Joy, you can't beat it. I can have arthritis. I can be broke. I can be dead tired. But if I have joy, it's all right. And what happens sometimes is the millionaires and the zillionaires, they work so hard to increase their wealth that they squeeze joy right out of their system. And there's another thing. If I believe that God made me unique, I never have to compete with anybody else. If God made me unique, God made you unique. And God made you unique. And we're all unique, so I don't have to compete. And do you know what stress comes forth from competition? Whether academically, mechanically, sports-wise, really we. Competition. I don't have to compete. It took me a while to realize that. And now, no matter what pressures I may have, I may say, ouch, but I don't tighten up. Because I know as soon as I tighten up, it's a uh uh and when I bring an uh into my system, then I cut off the source of help from God. Then I go around looking for my own remedies. And usually they don't do me too much good because I become hooked on them. So, can you live without stress? Sure you can. Is it price? Well, yes. But when you think of the fruits and think of the joy, price isn't too high. You only get what you pay for. And if you don't pay a lot by way of humiliations and by way of humbleness before God, and the big one is obedience. Do you know what? If we were obedient, and the more obedient we are, the less stress we have. Because we say yes, yes, yes. And as I travel the country, even at times talking with the children in the schools, I ask them, what's the secret word? Money. No, no, no. The secret word is yes. When mother, dad want you to do something, when God wants you to do something, okay. You see, that comes right from the heart. And I cannot give a real yes if I'm mental. So you see, again, there's an argument in favor of living in the heart. 
because once with my heart I say, okay, God, you made me take care of me. I'll put myself into your care. All stress goes. All stress goes. And it's so cheap. It doesn't cost money. It's an attitude within me that, okay, I'm a creature. God owns me, and I owe him my life. So I'll do what he wants. And as soon as I live by obedience as my lifestyle and it becomes integrated into my personality that I obey, I choose to obey rather this than disobey, then all stress leaves. Take it from me because I've gone through a lot of stress and I've used artificial means in the past. It doesn't help. It doesn't work. The best, best remedy to stress. Say, okay, God, whatever you want. Try it.